Hi everyone, Nigel Saunders here. Today I'm going to be working on my Schaeffler bonsai. This is in a Vietnam style pot and stand that was 3D printed. And the top of the tree has grown quite wild and long and you can't really see what's going on. Here's a look at the tree and the pot and the stand. And this pot design was inspired by the Vietnam or the Vietnamese style of bonsai, the large pots, cement pots on the cement stands and tables. I really like that style, it's, it's pretty cool. And this is a dwarf Schaeffler, the tree. So you can see it's very leafy and bushy, which is the perfect time for pruning. This tree's been growing all summer and it's all bushy and wild. So I think the first step for today will be to defoliate the tree and then I can see the branch structure and do the pruning. I'll begin the defoliation now. So I just prune off each leaf one at a time. And as I said, this tree's been growing all summer, so it's full of vigor and it should recover quickly from this leaf pruning operation. If this tree were weak or ravaged by insects, defoliation may not be the right thing to do. I was looking at studio lighting yesterday and it's quite expensive. I, uh, I kind of have one picked out. It has the single LED in the middle, super bright. If you get the, uh, the panels with the multiple LED lights on them, they cast really weird shadows. You get a shadow from each little LED and instead of, you know, a clean shadow, you get all these fuzzy multiple shadows. And I think it would be really confusing making a video of the trees with all those weird, you know, those weird shadows on them. So that's the reason I'm looking at this single bright LED light ones. And they're running around $500 for a video light, which is a lot of money for lights. When you consider I have to buy LED grow lights for the room still and Wow, it's getting getting quite expensive. At least on these dark rainy days, I have a roof over my head, which is really nice. I, uh, I'm so glad to get this plant room done. So some of these shoots on this tree are really strong. It's grown this much over the summer, which is good growth considering it's in, you know, a moderate sized pot and it's growing in Canada, which isn't exactly a tropical paradise. As I prune away all the leaves, I'm slowly revealing the structure of the tree and it's exciting to see it. It's kind of been hidden for quite a while. So it'd be nice to get the tree pruned back and on the right track to grow once again. And again, I want to remind everyone that clip and grow bonsai you have to let the tree grow and then you clip it. It's not clip and clip. I've seen a lot of people working on really weak trees, pruning them when, you know, they should be letting them grow for a longer period of time. When they get really bushy is the time you want to prune them. So let them grow wild, get them bushy and vigorous. And then when you prune them, there's no danger of them getting weak and dying. Where is that attached? Right there. Wow, this was a tangled, tangled area on the tree. There we go, that really opened that area up. There were some aerial roots that began to grow this year, but I didn't really get any that touched the ground, unfortunately. So we'll just keep trying, you know, as it gets more bushy up top, your chances of getting aerial roots increase because it's kind of keeps the humidity and the shade down here. And you miss the tree a lot and they'll naturally get aerial roots forming. A lot of people ask me, do I fertilize my trees over the winter? And yes, I do. I, uh, 
I mix my tiny bit of fertilizer in with my water. So whenever I water my trees, I'm also fertilizing at the same time. If the tree's actively growing in the winter, then it needs fertilizer. If a tree's dormant, then it doesn't. So all my tropical trees generally grow over the winter. Not as vigorously as they would in the summer, but they're still growing. So they still need fertilizer. In the winter, they use less water and therefore they get less fertilizer too. In the summer, you know, I'm watering two, maybe three times a day. So they're getting more water and more fertilizer. So even though I'm fertilizing in the winter, it's not as much as they get in the summer. A cloudy day like this, the trees don't use much water at all because there's no sunshine. And until I get the grow lights up, they just sort of sit there and wait for the sun. So yeah, if it's cloudy out, if I get four or five days of cloudy days in a row, I hardly have to water the trees. I just miss them a little bit and that's it. When the sun does come out, it can dry this pot out in one day. So you really have to be careful on sunny days to make sure your trees are getting lots of water. I'll get this branch that's coming out the front here, defoliated. That'll reveal a lot more of the structure in here. When you're defoliating, make sure you check your leaves for insects. I'm not seeing any on here, but yeah, look at your leaves, check for scale, white fly, aphids, anything on your trees. Always be inspecting. And if you see a problem, take action. The earlier you get at the insects, in an enclosed room like this, the better off you are because, you know, they'll spread very quickly from tree to tree. So you have to be very careful indoors with your bonsai trees that you keep your insects under control and you're always fighting them. Otherwise they get out of hand and it becomes a big problem. I just saw a little scale insect there, so make sure I get rid of that. I'll dispose of all these leaves outside. There's a spider in here I gotta relocate. Come on. Oh. I don't know where he, there he goes. Okay. Put him over on another tree here. It just keeps raining today. It's been raining all day long. It was raining when I got up this morning. It's mid-afternoon now. It's still raining. And really hard too. With all the foliage that was on this tree, it was getting hard to get in here to water it too. You had to really kind of go all the way around. You couldn't water from above, it just ran off. So it'll be nice to get it down a little more compact so I can get in there with the watering can. Okay, I think I've just got the one branch to go here. So Yeah, that is defoliated now. Because I did see a scale blister on one of the leaves, I'm going to spray the tree with soap and water, and I use 40 parts water to one part dish soap, liquid dish soap, and I just spray the tree. So here I go. Okay, so that should be good. I'll just let that sit for a while and then I'll rinse it off with uh, rainwater. The tree sat for a few minutes and now it's time to rinse it off. So here I go. And again, you should always test out the soap and water on your tree. Some trees are quite sensitive. I know my poinsettia when I used to have it. If I sprayed soap and water on the leaves, the leaves just crumpled up and died. So you have to be careful, do a little test spray in some area on your tree and see if it can take the soap and water. If it doesn't, try diluting it more. You know, instead of 40 to one, maybe you'll go 60 to one or something like that. I looked at the playlist for this tree 
And the last time I did this operation, defoliating and pruning to this tree, was in November of 2019. So, you know, just over a year ago. So I'll be doing the same operation today, pruning it back. And I noticed this one branch coming out the front of the tree. A year ago, that was just a little tough of a branch. So it's grown all this in the one year. So it's not the greatest branch sticking out like that. A branch like that, you have the possibility, you could prune it off or, you know, instead of it coming straight out towards you, kind of an eye poker branch, you can rotate the tree slightly so it's coming off at a bit of an angle. So, all right, it's time now to start pruning the tree. And again, before you prune it, I should talk about what style I want this tree in. I don't want it a tall tree. I want it low and wide. Um, so, yeah, I, I want it, you know, quite thick, low and wide with, you know, sort of tiered structure to the branches. Getting that kind of Vietnam style to it. It's time to start pruning now. And what you don't want on a bonsai is these long straight shoots. Even though they have a bit of a curve to them, they're still basically a straight shoot with very little taper, no change of direction and no sub branching. So I want to prune these new shoots off quite short. And I'm looking at the leaf direction of the old leaves and there's one coming out the side here and one coming off the bottom. So I'll prune just above there using directional pruning. So my new branches will come out this direction and one out the front. I'll probably get one out the top too. I've got a shoot growing up, straight up on the top here. I think I want to remove that. I don't want anything growing straight up on the tree. So that comes off. Uh, the shoot out the back here, same thing. I'm looking for leaves that were facing more horizontal. So I'm going to prune it here putting the top off and I've got two good leaves coming out each side and one out the back. So all the new growth on this branch will come in fairly horizontal. Now I've got a big rocket branch sticking up here. So there's no, if I could prune it up here where the leaves were, but that's too high. I'd have too long a spacing. So I'm looking for leaf scars. So where the leaves were, and I've got one out the back here, one here. So I'm gonna prune just above there like that. I've got a branch here. It comes out the bottom of this fairly thick branch and then it kind of comes up. It curves up and goes, gets tangled up in these other two branches. So that will need to be pruned off shorter and I'm going to go right back to here like that. And I've got, you know, a leaf that was here. So a new branch will come out this direction, like from here out this direction. And I've got a leaf scarp here, so there's another possibility it'll come out this direction. So that gets it kind of growing more horizontally and not up into the upper structure here. Just cleaning up a pruning scar from last time. So I'm going to prune this branch here now, so I'll take this one off here. And this one. This one's kind of growing on the inside. It's going back in towards the tree. This one right here. Um, yeah, I don't think I want that one. It interrupts the flow of the branch, so I'll remove it entirely. So here I go. Just like that. So you can see that now. There's I have a branch coming out the bottom here and I also have one opposite on the top and that one looks kind of funny. So I'll remove that one also from here like that. So now I'm looking at the branch from the front and I think I do need to prune this one coming up the back off shorter. So I'm going to look for some more leaf scars back here. Prune it off to here. It's sticking up too, too high. And I think, I think that's looking good. I've got a branch here. It kind of comes out from the trunk and does this 
snake-like dance and then it kind of curves and starts reaching skyward so I'm going to prune that back shorter and I think to right here like that kind of continuing this winding snake-like theme off to the side of the tree I've got some upright structure here and I like that I think it looks quite good it just needs a little little reduction so I'll take it off right here this one and this one I'm looking for a leaf scar that's coming out this way so I'll take it off right right here just the tip off I've got at this back branch here now I've got a vertical section here which kind of it grows up and crosses it grows up and it kind of crosses this branch so I'm going to am I going to remove it totally yes I think so it's going to be removed totally so here I go and then I'm going to clean up there's the a stub here from previous pruning so I'll clean that up pruning it flush like that I've got a branch out the back here I'm just going to shorten it to get a little more compact and some more movement and I'll take this one off here clean up a stub here and that has got that back branch cleaned up nicely so there's a look from the front now okay I'm looking at that branch now that comes straight out the front and it's a bit of an eye poker branch but as I said I could repot it off to the angle so it's not coming straight out at you but when you rotate the tree around this way you can see these two branches are almost opposite each other and I don't look I don't like that look it, it looks like someone with their hands out and you know if they're staggered they look okay but when they're kind of almost directly opposite like that I don't like that look so I've decided I'm going to remove that front branch all right so I'll come in and I'll just prune it off here I go just like that so that's a nice cut there that'll heal over nicely you can see at the front here there's already been a branch removed there looks quite nice it doesn't doesn't bother your eye or anything these will heal over as the tree grows and someday you won't even see them just a little more pruning to go so let's have a look at the tree again so I've got a branch that's quite long coming out this side that'll need to be cut back I'll just take a previous pruning scar off there and there's two leaves one that was growing down here and one out the back so I think if I prune somewhere just above there, I'll go right here. That branch will develop sub-branching and it'll look quite nice, I think. There is a branch growing straight up on this branch on the top. I think I'll remove that. There's another one growing out the back here, which is good. And that, there's a new branch coming out here. That brings us up towards the apex here. And I've got quite a long shoot coming up here, so I want to prune that off. And I've got a, a previous leaf that was facing out this direction, so I'll go just, just above there, like that. I've got a bit of clutter in here. I've got this part of the uh, apex comes up, and I've got a branch here, one here, and one here, and one here. So basically four branches coming out from one spot. So I'm going to remove the one that's kind of growing in towards the apex. So this one right here, that will come off entirely. I'll shorten this upper one. Um, I think to here, like that. And I'll also shorten this one at the back here. I'll come in here like that. So now I've got this part of the trunk comes up. I've got the new leader here, and then I've got two branches coming off of it, which looks quite good. I don't think I need to do anything further in that area. 
I've got a long branch coming out the back here. You can see the growing tip. There's a new leaf coming out on it. So I'll just prune it back a bit. That'll encourage sub branching there. And I think that has got the pruning all done. Yeah, that's got the tree all pruned up. I think it's looking quite nice too. Looks like a dancing dragon. These Schefflera arboricolas will root really easy from a cutting. Just defoliate the bottom of the cutting, stick it in soil, and nine times out of ten they'll root. So the last thing to do on this tree is just to clean up the soil, the pot, and put it back on the bench and let it grow. The moss layer on this tree is quite nice. I'm just going to clean up some of the uh, debris that's fallen down from other trees in the area. Something, a bird or something's been kicking the moss on this side. I'm always fixing moss after birds. They always come in and start digging for worms. But you know, it's part of nature and part of growing bonsai. Okay, I think that looks pretty good. There's a look at the tree now. You can kind of see it with the light above it, what it would look like out in the sunshine. I'll rotate the tree around now so you can see it from all angles. So here I go. Coming around to the side, to the back, to the left side, and back to the front. My dwarf Schifflera is all pruned up now and ready to grow the grow part of Clip and Grow Bonsai. I'm Nigel Saunders. Thanks for joining me today in the Bonsai Zone. <laughs>